a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. I mean it. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then, what right have you to be this more? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah, humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas, out upon Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you but the time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older, but not an hour richer. A time for balancing your books and every item in them through a round dozen of months presented dead against you? If I were to work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. Uncle! You. Keep Christmas in your own way, and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it! Let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. Much good it has ever done you. There are many things for which I have tried good, but which I have not profited. I dare say Christmas among the rest. I have always thought of Christmas time as a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of Europe where men and women seem by one consent to open up their hearts freely and to think of those below them as fellow passengers to the grave and not another race bound on journeys. And therefore, Uncle, though it has ever put up scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, it has done me good, and it will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Parker, let me hear another sound from you and you will keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You are quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Bah! I'd sooner dine with the devil himself. But why? 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 Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. <laughs> because you fell in love. Good afternoon. Nay, Uncle, but you never came to see me before I got married. Why give a reason for not coming now? Good afternoon. I asked them for you. I don't even want anything from you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. There has never been a quarrel to which I have been a party. And I have made trial and homage to Christmas. And I will keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. <laughs> All the happiness of the season be with you, Mr. Cratchit. Thank you, and with you and yours. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. God bless you and your family. <laughs> now look at this fellow. My clerk with 15 shillings a week. Wife and children talking about a Merry Christmas. I'll retire to bedroom. Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago, this very night. We have no doubt his liberality is well represented by the surviving partner. Huh. Indeed it is. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provisions for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in one of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands in one of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty. And the workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. Still, I wish I could say they were not. Oh, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had happened to the prisons and workhouses in their useful course. I am very glad to hear it. Under the impression that those establishments scarcely furnish Christian cheer of mind or body to the multitude, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and a means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. So what can I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you asked what I wish, madam, that is my answer. I don't make merry my supper Christmas, and I have no time to make idle people merry. The establishments I mentioned earlier must provide for the poor and destitute. They cost enough, and those who are badly off must go there. But many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it, and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I don't know that they would. But you might know it. 
It's, it's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business, not to interfere with others. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon. Seven years.
this up, sir! Jacob. Jacob Wally? Jacob, sir? Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. Man, I thought that you... All right, sir. No harm done. A Merry Christmas, sir. Yes. Yes. Can you, can you 
come in. I can. Do it then. You don't believe in me. I don't. What evidence of my reality would you have beyond that of your own senses? Why do you doubt your senses? Hmm. Because a mental name affects them. A uh, disorder of the stomach makes some cheats. You could be an undigested bit of beef, a, a glut of mustard, a, a crumb of cheese, a, a fragment of an underdone potato. <laughs> There's more grave than a grave about you, whatever you are. Ah! Oh, mercy, a dreadful apparition. Why do you trouble me? Let the worldly mind, you believe in me or not? I do. I must. Why do spirits roam the earth? And why do they come to me? It is required of every man, the spirit within him, to travel among his fellow men, travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world and witness what it cannot share, but what it might have shared on earth, and turn to happiness. Oh, woe with me! You, you are fettered. Tell me why. I wear the chain that I forged in life. I made it link by link of avarice, pride, hard dealing, insensitivity, and greed. I girded it out of my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Is this pattern strange to you? Or would you know the very weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? Seven Christmas Eves ago, it was as full, as heavy, and as long as this, and you have labored hard upon it since. Jacob, tell me more. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. Comfort? Comfort comes from other regions, Evan is Scrooge, and it's conveyed by other ministers to other kinds of men. A very little more is permitted. <coughs> I cannot rest. I cannot linger anywhere. In life, my spirit never walked beyond that of our counting house. Mark me! In life, my spirit never rode beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hole, and weary journeys lie before me! Seven years dead and traveling all the time? The whole time. No rest. No peace. You must have been very slow about the chicken. You could have covered a lot of ground in seven years. Oh, captive bound and double iron! Not to know that age of incessant labor upon this earth must pass into eternity before its good is all developed. Not to know that no regrets to make amends for one life's opportunities misused. Yet such was I. Oh, such was I! But you were always such a great man of business, Jacob. Business! Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, Benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of business. At this time of the rolling year, I suffer most. Why did I walk through crowds of fellow beings with my eyes turned down and never raise them to that blessed star which led wise men to a poor abode? Were there no poor homes to which its life could have conducted me? Hear me, for my time has nearly come. I understand. Don't be hard on me, and, and pray don't be flowery, Jacob. How it is that I appear before you in the shape that you can see, I may not tell. I have sat beside you invisible many a day. That is no light part of my penance. I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. Yet a chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You were always such a great friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. The chance of hope you mentioned, Jacob? Yes. I... I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. <coughs> Expect the first tomorrow at once, and the bell tolls one. Can't I just take them all at once and have it over with Jacob? Expect the second, when the bell tolls two, and the third, when the bell tolls three. Look to see me no more, and for your own sake, remember what has passed between us!
Perhaps it was all just a dream. Wait a moment. Old Jacob Stowe said the first visitation was to be at one o'clock. When the hour is struck, here I am still, alone in this room. No visitation in sight. It was a dream. Foretold to me? I am. Who and, and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. A long past? No, your past. If I may be so bold, uh, might I inquire what business it is that brings you here? Your welfare. Ah, yes, I, I, I see. I, I am much obliged to you. It seems to me a night of unbroken rest might have been more conductive to that end. Your reclamation, then. Take heed. Spirit, where are you taking me? Will I be safe? Bear with the touch of my hand, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Good heavens, I was bred in this place. I was a boy here. Look, I used to swing on that fence every morning. The old oak tree. And look, down there, in the footpath down to the river. And the common bridge. And there's the school. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheeks? What? What? Oh, it must have been a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recollect the way? Remember it? I can walk a blindfold. See you in January. Right. Look, it's Frank and Charlie. Charlie, hi! And there's Barnaby! Merry Christmas, Barnaby! The, the Higgins boys, Tom and, oh, what was his brother's name? Merry Christmas, everybody! A Merry Christmas to you all! Merry Christmas, Ebenezer. What good has Merry Christmas ever done you? I, uh... The school is not quite deserving. A solitary boy, ignored by his friends, neglected by his family, is left there still. I know that spirit. Dear, dear brother, I've come to bring you home. My little family, for Christmas? Yes, brother is much kinder than he used to be. I was not afraid to ask him once more if I might come home. I if I might bring you home from school for Christmas. And he said yes. What? <laughs> And again, we won't be eaten anymore. We've been together all Christmas long and had the merriest time in the world. Has he stopped drinking then? Oh yes, brother, he has. I think all my pleading has paid off. I don't know that I believe you, little fan. I just can't believe he can change so much. He's always been hard to pull to me. He blames me for Mother's death. How can that be? It wasn't your fault that Mother died. You always blame me for everything that went wrong. Not anymore, brother. He's a changed man. I know it. You're quite something, Dad. All right, I'll go with you. <coughs> Delicate creature, whom a breath might have withered, <coughs> but she had a large heart. So she had. And died a woman. And how does he think? Children? One child. True, your nephew, Fred. Yes. And now another woman of your past. No, 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 Spirit, please, not this. My Ebenezer, your heart is beating so fast. Are you sick? Love sick, I'm sure. Is there anyone more beautiful than you, dear Belle? Oh, Ebenezer. Promise me that you wait for me to make something of myself. In my eyes, you are something. I'm a young man, a princess of Fezzi wouldn't come to my father. A father who could have set me up in my own business, but he hadn't wasted all of his money on drink. How can I set my wife on princess's wages? A wife? Did you think I'd make you false promises? But the knees are all I've ever hoped for. Belle, will you marry me? I promise to be always yours, and nothing will ever come before you. Yes, yes, I will. Was 
it necessary for me to see that spirit? Everything you see is necessary. Do you know this place? No. I was apprenticed here. Oh, it's old Bessiewick. Bless his heart. It's Bessiewick alive. Yo, ho there. Ebenezer. Jacob. Bessiewick is calling you. You better get in there. <coughs> Ebenezer, I have something to talk to you about. Jacob Molly, to be sure. Bless me, yes. There he is. He's very much attached to me, was Jacob. Poor Jacob. Dear, dear. Can it wait? For an hour, yes, but not a minute longer. What have you two been up to? I've been looking for you for the last ten minutes. Sorry, we're just finishing up the numbers, sir. We lost track of the time. Yo ho, my boys. No more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve, and you two have worked hard enough all year. Now it's time to have some fun. Christmas, Ebenezer. Let's have the shutters up before a man can say Jack Robinson. Helio, clear away, my lads, and let's have lots of room. Helio, Jacob. What is the matter? Nothing in particular. Something I think. No. No, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just then. That's, that's all. Tonight is the night that all the year's hard work is rewarded for the celebration. And let's make Mary and dance tonight. But before I let the dancing commence, I would like to thank two of my hardest working employees, Jacob Marley and Ebenezer Scrooge.
I promise. Good night, my love. Old Fisher Rick sure knows how to throw a party. It's unfortunate that he doesn't put as much work into running his business. Why do you say that? He gives us enough work to both keep us busy. He's losing money every month. I'm not sure how much longer he'll be able to hold on to the business. But he's the most generous and well liked man in the town. Of course. Why shouldn't he be? He's practically giving his services away for free. And our future is with him. Our future? If Fezzeri goes under, where do you think we'll find ourselves? Out the door, I can show you. Fortunately, I've come up with a plan. But it will take our complete devotion. We'll have time for nothing else. Go ahead. What is it? Well, I figured we could call it Scrooge and Marley. We'll split everything 50 50. And after that. Quick! My time goes short. Another scene that she might remember. That is little to you, Ebenezer. Very little. Now that has displaced me. And if that's what you want, I have no cause to grieve. Who has displaced you? You mean what, Ebenezer? Money, wealth? That is the foremost in your thoughts. This is the way of the world. Greed is your master passion, Ebenezer. It consumes you. You have no time for love. My love for you has not changed. You have no time for me. How will you have time for a family? I thought we would want the same thing, but now I'm not so sure. A man must work to get ahead in the world. How can I raise a family on the pins that I make? Love is the most important possession, Ebenezer. Without love, no marriage can be successful. Without the benefit of money, a man, his wife, and their children struggle to survive. You made a promise to me. We were both poor and content to be so. You're a changed man, Ebenezer. I am a better man. You are not what you were. I release you from your promise, Ebenezer. Have I ever sought release? In words, no. In what then? In an altered nature, in actions, in anything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. If we met today, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Yes, Belle, yes! Yes? You, which is a dowless girl. You, who made everything by you. I release you, Ebenezer, with a full heart. May you be happy in the life of you. Not life of me. Remove me. Why do you delight in torturing me? Conduct me home. One shadow more. No, no, no more. No more. Show me no more. I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. Who was it? Yes. Tell me. Ebenezer Scrooge. I passed his office window. He had a candle inside. I could scarcely help seeing him. His partner lies upon the point of death, and there Scrooge sits, counting his money. He's quite alone in this world, I believe. Don't feel sorry for him, darling. That is the life that he chose many years ago. Remove me from this place. I told you, these are but the things that have been. They are what they are. Do not blame me. R remove me. I, I cannot bear it. Take me back. Haunt me no longer.
present. Look upon me! Ah! <laughs> You've never been like such a day before? Never! You've never fought for two of my elder brothers and sisters? I don't believe I have. I, I'm afraid I have not. Have you had many brothers and sisters? <laughs> Eighteen hundred? A tremendous family to provide for. <laughs> That's better. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth earlier upon compulsion, and I learned a lesson which is working now. If you are about to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe! <laughs> And 
housework then, Martha. Well, it's been good, and I've bought this big bill. Oh, no. Do you know what he asked? Not a clue. Oh. Please, Mother May, we have a tiny taste of the goose. Oh, please, Mother May, we... That's enough. I do not want to hear about the goose again until it is cut. Here, put these spoons in your mouth and leave them there for two minutes. <laughs>
um, it's actually this aggravate me, that a man like that should base his whole life upon making money, and then step back refusing any good thing for anyone. I have no patience with him. Oh, I have. I feel bad for him. I couldn't be mad at him, even if I tried. Who suffers by his own limbs, himself always. And here he comes to take into account a dislike to us. But what's the consequence? He doesn't lose much of a dinner. <laughs> Indeed. I think he loses a very good dinner. Well, I'm glad to hear. For I have no faith in these young housekeepers. Always more interested in playing the games than their dinner. What do you say, Topper? Why, my dear friend, that's a subject on which I have even the right to express an opinion to me as I am a poor, wretched housekeeper. Do go on by your uncle Scrooge, friend. He never finishes what he begins to say. He's such a ridiculous fellow. I was only going to say that the consequences of him taking his life to us and not making him marry with us this Christmas is that he loses some pleasant moments, which could do him no harm. For I intend to give him the same chance year after year, whether he likes it or not. For I am fond of him, despite his ill humor. He may rail at Christmas till he dies, but he won't start thinking better of him. I defy him. And if he finds me going there year after year, saying, Uncle oh, Scrooge, how are you? If it only puts him to leave his court at 15 shillings, then that's something. And I think I should come yesterday. I'll wait for that day. Now then, as dinner was an acknowledged success, let's try the gates. What shall we play? Forfeit. Yes, forfeit. No, black knight's block. That's for later. Black knight's block. How would we win? Yes and no. How about yes and no? No. Big yes is that. I'll go first. Let me see. Oh, I'm thinking of a nest. Are you thinking of a vegetable? No. You know, not quite. Animal. Yes. Is it hairy? Wait, wait a moment. He tried this last time. Is it dead? No, not quite. It's alive? Well, it is. Oh, uh, hibernate. Does it hibernate? Is it hairy? Yes. Is it a pleasant little animal? No. A horse? You can't ask that yet. Is it a large, ugly, disagreeable animal? Yes. Savage? Yes. Does it roar? No. Does, Does it hide? Look, look here, look down here, 
spirits, are they yours? They are man's, and they cling to me, appealing from their fathers. This is ignorance, and this is want. Beware to look and follow their dream.
I, I, I understand, Mr. Spears. This is the man they were speaking of. If he were to be raised up, his foremost thoughts would be of our person of our dealing. They have brought him to a rich end. Alone in this house, not a single soul to mourn, to remember him for even one kind word. Spirit, I see, I see. The case of this wretched man might be of my own. My life turns that way now. Spirit, this is the most fearful place. In leaving it, I shall not leave its lesson. Please, just trust me. Let us go. I, I would, I would look if I could, but I have not the power, spirit. I have not the power. If there was any emotion connected to this man's death, show that person to me, spirit. I beseech you. Are we more trying to make the payment? He is past relenting now. He is dead. Dead? Oh, thank God. <laughs> but to whom will our debt be transferred? No one could say. But by the time we are told, we shall be ready with money. And even if we are not, his successor could never be so merciful. We shall be, we shall sleep well at last tonight, Caroline. Spirit, is there no other emotion but pleasure caused by this man's death? Let me see some tenderness connected to a death, for that dark chamber spirit will be forever present to me. And he sat down and called the twelve. and said unto them, Behold, the Lord of the any man is already first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child, and set him in the midst of this. Brother, it will be all right. The color hurts my eyes. They're better now. They become weak by candlelight, and what it show we guys to your father for the world. It must be near his time. Past it, brother. My days are walked a little slower than he used to these past few evenings, brother. I have no room to walk with a tiny tip upon his shoulder very fast. So why? And he loved him so that it was not true. And here's your father at the door. Tim, 
And Belton with us. I'm sure he's a good soul. You can be sure of it, dear. I shouldn't be at all surprised. Mark what I say, if he got Peter a better situation. Only hear that, Peter. And then Peter would be keeping company with someone and setting up for himself. He don't want It's just as likely as not. One of these days, well, there's plenty of time for that. But however and whenever we are parted from one another, I'm sure none of us shall forget poor Tiny Tim, shall we? Or this first parting that there was among us. Of course not. And I know, I know, my dears, that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was a little, little child, we shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor Tiny Tim in doing it. <coughs> I'm very, very happy. I am a very happy man. Spectre, something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. You mean to show me? You do not. The dead body was so alive. You're dead. Before I draw near to that man to which you point, answer me this question. Are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are these the shadows of the things that may be only? Men's courses will foreshadow certain events to which, if proceeded, they must lead. But the courses be departed from, the ends will change. Say it is thus with what you show me. Oh, 
Oh, never mind that. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Merry Christmas to you. 
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Hello, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Hello there, Merry Christmas to you. No fucking there. Merry Christmas to you, dear boy. Merry Christmas to you. I like the other. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas.
Sean's mother. Oh, you fuck it. Oh, uh, cool. Here, just trade this here. Oh, here it is. <laughs>